Welcome to the Pipeline, Western Standard's weekly public affairs program. I'm Derek Fildebrandt, publisher of the Western Standard. Joining me today in the top right of your screen from top to bottom is Western Standard podcast editor and columnist Corey Morgan. Good day, Corey. Good afternoon. Joining us from an undisclosed bunker somewhere. Uh, As usual. Ken Grafton, uh, Ottawa Bureau Chief for the Western Standard, joining me from the Den of Lions itself. Good day, Ken. Hi, Derek. How are you? Very good. And in the bottom right corner, uh, bottom, but uh, on the screen, but not in reality, uh, Dave Naylor. Let's move him up. Uh, Dave yeah. Naylor, news editor of the Western Standard, joining us from Vancouver. How are you doing, Dave? I'm good, Derek. It's always good to be on top. Very good. All right. Well, today uh, we're going to be going through uh, a lot of what's happening across the West here and, and in Ottawa, of course, involving the West. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, enforcement of lockdowns now turning violent. Um, in uh, the particular case capturing the attention of Westerners and many across Canada is the arrest of uh, a man for uh, playing a game of pickup hockey in Calgary and the rather farcical and violent uh, ensuing uh, arrest uh, that took place from there. We're gonna, we're gonna get into that and parse it. Uh, we're gonna talk about the 1,300, 1,300 flights that have come to Canada since September that have had COVID positive passengers on it. Uh, what has been happening with that? And why the hell is that happening? Well, we're not allowed to celebrate Christmas. And uh, we'll talk about uh, the uh, COVID bailout that's taking place and uh, programs that are there for businesses. Why is Ch the Bank of China, SNC Lavalin, and the Weed Charity uh, getting money from taxpayers right now? We're going to get into that as well. So uh, we're going to start right here in the West. Uh, I'm obviously coming to you from Calgary, the scene of the latest locked, uh, of lockdowns turning violent. Um, we had uh, an extraordinary case here where a, uh, a pair of uh, Calgary police officers uh, quite terribly attempted to use force to uh, take down a skinny 21-year-old uh, pickup hockey player, and it went pretty ter terribly. Uh, we're going to have Dave set it up in a second, but first we're going to uh, bear with us. We're uh, new on this part of the technology, but we're going to try and show you the video uh, very quickly here. Well, screw that. That is not working. Um, <laughs> that, there, that's our first and last attempt uh, for now. Uh, maybe we'll try to show you, but many of you have already seen it. This, uh, the video of this has gone absolutely viral. Um, sorry, I think we got a little bit frozen here. Uh, Dave, why don't you uh, tell us what, what the heck happened here? Uh, why was this man arrested? And how, how did the whole thing go down? Ain't technology uh, great when it doesn't work, uh, Derek? Uh, this all happened uh, Thursday afternoon in the southwest Calgary community of Southwood. Uh, I know it very well. My kids grew up in the, in that neighborhood, and they've been to that outdoor rink many a time. Uh, that Thursday afternoon, there was an outdoor game of shinny going on. Uh, some neighbor called the snitch line, and uh, bylaw arrived and tried to persuade the group to leave. They didn't. Uh, so the, the cops were called. Uh, cops arrived. Uh, oh, there you go. The video is uh, working now, so I'll just uh, uh, let you watch it. It's not a gun. It's a taser, and he's under arrest. And I have the authority to under, use force to protect an arrest. We'll just leave it alone. Let's okay. go. Well, what's his name? Okay. Oh, let's go. Oh, sh oh, sh oh, sh what are you doing? Yeah, like videotape. Hey, videotape. what are you doing? What are you guys doing? What are you guys doing? We were under arrest. Why are you, why are you, what are you doing? Why are you guys grabbing? Like, why are you guys grabbing? What are you oh. doing? What are you doing? Whoa. 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 What are you guys doing? Okay. 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 
So as you can see there, Derek, it, uh, it, it turned into a bit of a fiasco. Uh, gentleman involved was a called uh, Ocean Weasblatt. Um, comes from a family of uh, young hockey players. His brother was the first round draft choice uh, this year for the San Jose Sharks. Another brother plays for the Calgary Hitmen. All raised by a single mother who happens to be deaf. And her struggles were featured on an intermission of a uh, hometown hockey uh, on uh, Rogers, uh, this one of the, this hockey uh, season. So, and one of the readers was right. Everybody seems to have seen the, the video, and everybody's got their opinion of it. It's exploded on social media. Certainly exploded on our site. Uh, people say uh, Ocean was, uh, you know, got what he deserved. He's charged with resisting arrest, uh, obstruction, uh, and uh, breaching the peace order. Uh, there are lots of mockery about the police, uh, uh, as you saw in the video, repeated knees and uh, profane threats uh, of a tasering. Uh, the, those police actions are being criticized. The police chief himself held a press conference uh, uh, earlier this week to, to address the issue. Uh, some, some of his family today, we did a story that's on the website right now. A family branch in Ontario issued a statement saying... Uh, uh, Ocean was foolish and uh, should have just listened to the officers. So it's uh, John Carpe uh, of the uh, Canadian Centre for uh, Constitutional Freedoms, the Justice Centre, uh, talking to him uh, yesterday or the day before, I'm sorry, and he, he said it was an affront to human dignity, that arrest, and uh, certainly getting a lot of attention. Police have a lot of explaining to do, and uh, uh, it was bad scenes all around. Thank you, Dave. So as you can see from the video there, it was quite an arrest. We can only imagine how much worse this would have been if he was an actual criminal and had actually done something to resist besides standing up. Uh, quite, quite a bizarre scene. Uh, I, I'm not very steady on skates. Uh, you know, I was out skating on the weekend. Uh, I didn't get tased, thankfully. But uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm a lot less steady on my feet on the ice. Um, he didn't push back. He didn't wrestle. He just essentially tried to stay standing. And uh, two police officers, ostensibly trained in force, uh, couldn't take him down. They were uh, kicking at his at the backs of his knees. Uh, I, I think, you know, maybe we should do uh, a crowd, uh, some crowdsourcing to get these cops some karate training or jujitsu or something. Uh, they, they couldn't seem to take this guy down. And he's not, uh, uh, you know, he, he's not exactly uh, someone who would play enforcer for the Flames. Uh, he's not a big guy. Um, but, no, but if you, when you see in the video, one of the one of the officers actually took a tumble onto the ice uh, during the struggle. So I'm sure that made them uh, them even angrier. And when they did get Ocean down to the ground, they actually cut his skates off. Uh, you know, that's uh, that's the kind of mood they were in. They wouldn't let him take his own skates off, and uh, they actually cut him off and uh, uh, dragged him away to jail. Uh, I guess in his stocking feet. Yeah, uh, so it was qu quite an extraordinary scene. Uh, we'll get in maybe to the appropriateness of it, but obviously the uh, the police officers became extremely agitated when he would not uh, respect their authority. 
Uh, you can almost picture a South Park episode out of this one. Um, uh, and, and their frustration at their inability to uh, tackle this uh, skinny guy to the ground uh, over uh, over quite a period of time. We only showed you half the video. Uh, I mean, there's still another half where this goes on and on and on. Um, uh, but then, you know, their frustration leads them to draw a pretty serious non-lethal weapon, a taser on this kid. Uh, Corey, maybe you want to speak to maybe the professional... Maybe uh, tell us about some of the reaction about the professionalism of these police, how they handled it. Uh, uh, let, let's just assume the guy's wrong. Just for the sake of argument here, we're going to say uh, Ocean is uh, is a bad guy and deserved to be arrested. Uh, maybe just speak about how the police handled it, even in that context. Well, sure. Well, if they really knew how to handle his case, they would have pulled his jersey over the back of his head and they could have brought him <laughs> down a lot faster. But clearly they had to. <laughs> time on the ice uh but being serious like this this was a circumstance if this had been a dangerous individual uh you know it's a bit of a more sensitive issue but those were also two small uh, female police officers and while he, he wasn't a large rampaging criminal uh they had some more challenges in, in trying for a physical takedown than other officers might uh, when we're talking in, in such a time when there's been so much tension with police forces and, and escalating situations, it really should have been, if they didn't feel they could get this in a reasonable manner, maybe they should have, again, just called for more help to come in and, and tried to talk it down. But when you get in and start physically wrestling, then, then yeah, one of them fell to the ground. She got more upset. Uh, and then they, they move on to the taser because they're feeling they physically can't cope with this you know, uh, by hand. Uh, so they felt they had to move on to the the taser, which is, can be quite dangerous, actually. I mean, they're less lethal uh, force methods. They aren't harmless. And again, the optics are just awful. I mean, wh what do you want young people to do right now? They're cooped up. They're stressed. They're they're getting upset. And there's, you know, you can't get much healthier than just getting out and doing some, some skating. And uh, this is what they crack down on. So it's just been an ugly scene all around. And another thing that didn't show on that video, but at one point the police got into the faces of the kids who were videoing it. And that's another problem, and that's upsetting because, you know, if we don't document these things, uh, we don't know what happened. And that's, uh, you know, it's been covered before. You, you have every right to film officers when something's going on, whether they like it or not. So so don't back off if they get in your face when you're doing so. Just stay out of the way, of course. So. Uh, indeed. Um, so I, I, I think it's hard to make an argument that these officers handled themselves correctly. Uh, in addition to their complete lack of any martial ability uh, or physical ability to deal with this guy, uh, their composure was wildly off, screaming, uh, I'll fucking taser you, uh, wild stuff. Uh, but in addition to their comportment uh, and their abilities to do their job, uh, well, let's talk about the appropriateness of this. Uh, you know, I think what this has done, I think what uh, Ocean Weissblatt has uh, maybe unwittingly exposed here, is that every law, uh, the good ones and the bad ones, are um, uh, are backed by the threat of violence. Uh, you know, if you kill someone, there's a threat of violence that the police will come and get you, and that's a good thing. You don't pay your taxes. Uh, you know, you'll get letters, and eventually, if you refuse to comply with taxes, you men with guns will come, and they will put you in prison. And now for something like this, uh, you know, if you don't respect, um, you know, the UCP's lockdown here, men and women with guns will come and they will use violence on you if you do not comply. And I, you know, the officers here repeatedly refused to answer his questions about what he was being charged with. They just said, you're breaking the law. You're breaking health, health orders or something. But they couldn't cite the law. And it's a pretty well-established constitutional principle in free countries, including Canada, that the police, uh, you know, if, if it's not imminently dangerous, if you're not pointing a gun at the cops or at a hostage or something, and you ask what I'm being charged with, they have to tell you. If they don't, you don't have an obligation to comply. That is a police state. You don't have an obligation to provide your identification uh, to the police just because they asked it, unless uh, they have indicated what you're being charged with. Again, that's a police state. In fact, it was uh, very specifically just outlawed by the UCP government in Alberta uh, a little over a month ago, carding, because it was used uh, disproportionately against minority groups. And so it was quite rightfully banned. Um, so, but what we're seeing here now is 
uh, a lockdown being enforced by people with guns. Um, and if God knows how far this would have gotten. Um, uh, Derek, these are, well, I think what we have to remember is these are tense situations. Uh, Police Chief Newfeld uh, at his press conference said, police don't want to be doing this. They have better things to be doing. And he, he's seeing more and more emotional, tense scenes. Uh, f more than 500 Calgarians have snitched on their neighbors. And these are uh, Calgarians who, who think that the, the, the health laws are being broken. And for the most part, they probably are right. They, they, they are broken. Uh, there were other cops at that scene in Southwood, but they were more concerned about keeping the crowd back, keeping the cameras back from filming. Uh, you know, they, instead of going to help their colleagues, they, 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 they were trying to maintain crowd control. Uh, and that, those sort of emotions have come into play during the, the downtown weekend protests where for, for the first time there were actual arrests last week and things got a little bit violent. Uh, but the, their their fear is inciting the crowd into into greater violence. Uh, certainly, the downtown case is a lot more uh, significant when you've got hundreds of people as opposed to uh, you know half a dozen young men armed with hockey sticks. But uh, you know, as you can tell, it was tense. The cops were tense. They made the situation worse with their threats and their their knees and their and their failed takedown. But. I don't think the police go into these situations lightly. I don't think they want to be there. And I think they're, you're at the point now where they understand people are fed up. And they understand every time they go into one of these things, there is a potential for it to go south. Yeah, absolutely. It's, um, you know, I think I want to talk about maybe some of the hypocrisy around some of this. Uh, you had guys like, uh, Mayor Nahid Nenshi, when the BLM protests were taking place uh, just a few uh, months ago uh, or, or during the summer, and uh, you know, some of the people there would be wearing masks, some of them not, some of them with social distance, some of them not, and uh, you didn't you didn't hear him say boo about it. Uh, the only I, I did a pretty extensive search online for his comments. The only comment I could find from Nenshi was that these people should just get a COVID test when it's all done. Now you have uh, protests, uh, so not just people playing hockey, but people actively protesting, exercising their right to free speech and free assembly, um, being arrested. And you have uh, Nahid Nenshi uh, calling them idiots, calling them selfish, calling them fools, saying that they should be arrested. Uh, well, what's the difference? Now, there are differences in, the only difference really is the protest, what the protest is about. Uh, these protests are against lockdowns. Some of them are against masks, not all, but uh, they're against lockdowns. They're against people losing their livelihood. They're against the government controlling what you can do in the space of your own private home. And that is apparently foolish and selfish, uh, but uh, but apparently uh, protesting to defund the police is, uh, is, is just fine. Uh, Corey, uh, how do you think... Uh, both Mayor Nenshi in Calgary has handled it, Don Iveson, Don Iveson in Edmonton, and then some of the other prominent politicians. Uh, do you think they've been particularly consistent in this going through? Well, consistent, I guess, somewhat, yeah. But, uh, and, uh, you know, they're in a position, if, if a bylaw has been set, they should expect people to abide by it and encourage people to abide by it. But as you said, that 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 chiding, you know, a scolding almost that they've been giving, this isn't helping. Uh, you know, people again are tense, they're upset, uh, and to be, you know, having their finger wagged at them by the mayor and, and such on these things is not going to make them feel any more inclined to be compliant. I mean, you know, I've had my uh, run-ins with Nietzsche and uh, and by law enforcement in the past when they, uh, they had the incident in Olympic Plaza. And I tell you, Ninchy's scolding wasn't going to make me any more likely to come out of the park uh, that day. Uh, it was negotiation with officers. So they're really handling this poorly. And things are going to get more tense as time goes by. So I hope they really reevaluate how they're coming at this. I'm not saying necessarily that they would drop the laws, but they've got to be a little careful with their enforcement. Indeed. Well, oh, sorry. Is there a feedback on here? Okay, well, everyone, just watch your camp, your mics for uh, for feedback. Um, all right, well, we're going to move on now. Uh, I I'm quite taken with the story. Just incredible to see police, uh, not not just the unprofessionalism of it, but the uh, 
you know, but let, let, let's just remember here, uh, while the police officers themselves may have bungled this and made an ass of themselves, uh, what they were doing overall, arresting someone for playing hockey, uh, that the fault is not necessarily with the police. It is with the politicians that ordered them to do so. Uh, they are following orders, and I'm just following orders is not always the greatest defense. Um, and they, there is accountability for their own actions. But let's uh, let's remember, they are acting on the orders of their superiors, and their superiors are acting on the orders of the politicians. It is the politicians who have ordered the lockdown who are ultimately responsible for people being uh, treated with violence for uh, disagreeing with it. Uh, but we're going to turn now to... Uh, Maybe somewhere where the government isn't doing enough, uh, kind of bizarrely. You know, they're arresting people for playing hockey. They're arresting people for uh, protesting against lockdowns. Uh, they say they're going to arrest you if you uh, have people over for Christmas uh, who are not single. Uh, but we have uh, 1,300 uh, flights that have come into Canada since September that have had people um, who have tested positive for COVID aboard it. Uh, let's go to Ken Grafton, our Ottawa Bureau Chief, for uh, what exactly is happening there. Yeah, Derek, this story came out when uh, the website was put up uh, by Health Canada. It's a searchable website and uh, lists all of the flights that have come into Canada where um, subsequently a COVID passenger has been identified. And uh, I think, you know, obviously it sounds bad when we say 1,300 COVID flights arrived or departed from Canada. I think for the most part, uh, what is happening is those people are being subsequently identified and traced back to that flight. So, um, you know, it's actually 2000 flights if you go back to, uh, I believe it's March uh, this year. Okay. Um yeah, I mean, a lot of flights do come in. Let's uh, we won't exaggerate it. Uh, it is a considering how many flights come in and out of Canada, it is not a great number, but it's still 1,300 flights of people coming over. Um, you know, uh, governments in Canada have been rather trigger happy in uh, locking Canadians down in their own homes and restricting them from going to restaurants or or playing hockey uh, in an open air pond. Uh, but they've been pretty hesitant, I think, about controlling flights from uh, hot areas. Uh, remember, uh, you know, Donald Trump originally put in a flight ban uh, from China, particularly from Wuhan province, and that was considered racist. Um, Ken, do we have any idea where these uh, flights are, uh, are coming from that have tested positive for COVID? Um, it's everywhere, Derek, basically, um, and all over Canada for departing flights as well. So these are, are global passengers. And of course, the problem is we can't really, there's no method for determining exactly how many infections occurred on the plane, if any. But obviously, if there's someone with COVID on an enclosed space like an aircraft, and uh, you know, the aircraft has 250 or 300 people on it, that's uh, potentially the number of infections that could have occurred. So uh, what is the government doing about it? We're still not testing people entering Canada for COVID-19. There's no testing at the border, period. And, uh, you know, as a, uh, an earlier article this week, uh, 5.3 million estimated uh, travelers have entered Canada without quarantining. So uh, it's not really surprising that uh, COVID is coming into the country now. Health Canada is also telling us that at this present time, the infection rate from international travelers is low. Um, I think it's 1% or something like that. Whereas early on, you will recall, it was quite high and initially the uh, almost sole in, uh, source of infection. Yeah. I think, Derek, that uh, uh, air travel was, was the reason the pandemic, uh, the, the initial pandemic sp spread so quickly. I mean, you've got somebody who's in China, could be in New York City the next day. Uh, now the big concern is the mutant virus that's popped up in, in southern England. And, and countries around the world are blocking air traffic to and from the United Kingdom. Well, uh, I'm sorry, but that horse has already left the barn. Uh, in the last week or so, just imagine the number of people that have flown out of the United Kingdom to various points in the world 
potentially with this mutant virus. It's already showing up in uh, in Italy and uh, South Africa. And uh, Dr. Tam, the Canadian Medical Officer of Health, says no uh, no uh, cases in Canada yet, but uh, dollars to donuts, they're coming. Indeed. Okay, well, let's, uh, we're going to turn our attention. Uh, also, more craziness in Ottawa. We've got, um, now, now we've got reports. Uh, well, the federal government has published uh, what companies in Canada have received uh, bailout, emergency bailout dollars from the COVID shutdowns. Uh, bailouts are always terrible. They're always bad. Uh, although in this particular case, uh, you know, some assistance might be required because the government's actions in shutting things down. Some things are not the government's fault. I mean, uh, I think some reasonable travel restrictions internationally, some basic social distancing, but when they're shutting down businesses, uh, they can't hurt. Although it's been small businesses that have been by far disproportionately hurt. But there have been some interesting recipients of uh, COVID uh, bailout dollars from the federal government. Uh, Ken, why don't you tell us uh, who's been getting money from the taxpayers in Ottawa right now? Well, I guess the three, the three most interesting ones, Derek, are the Bank of uh, China, um, SNC-Lavalin, and uh, We Charity. So um, the Bank of China, uh, for example, posted uh, close to 35% profit in the third quarter of 2020. It's one of the four largest banks in the world. Um, and all the four top banks in the world are Chinese banks. Um, you know, billions of dollars in assets. And uh, it's very difficult to conceive with those sorts of performance numbers that this company was in any way um, unduly stressed by the uh, COVID-19 virus. Now, I think the benefits went to the uh, Bank of China of Canada, um, which is uh, headquartered in Markham in the GTA. But, um, you know, that is very difficult for taxpayers, particularly in the uh, state that we're in right now, to think that we're subsidizing one of the four largest banks in the world who's posting exorbitant profits uh, in the middle of this global pandemic. And, of course, the other two that uh, I've known were SNC Lavalin and uh, We Charity, um, notable for their political uh, um, notoriety since last year. Um, we Charity is uh, interesting because they've left Canada or announced that they're leaving Canada. So, you know, the taxpayers have been subsidizing a registered charity, which some of the investigation uh, that went on to We Charity suggested was primarily a real estate investment company. Um, they've been subsidizing the, this company and uh, for the purpose of keeping jobs, and now the company has left left Canada entirely or is leaving Canada entirely. Um, SNC Lavalin as well is a global giant in engineering and construction and uh, it's probably capable of providing of uh, paying their own bills. Yeah. Uh, Corey, uh, obviously the federal government's handing out a lot of cash right now. It's, hand, you know, it's running deficits um, that are far in excess of even previous records uh, set by Stephen Harper during the 2008 financial crisis, or uh, William Lyon McKenzie during the Second World War, or Robert Borden during the First World War. Uh, you know, so I, I suppose at this point the, fed, uh, the federal government might just not care about how much money is going out. Uh, these programs, though, are set up not as targeted bailouts like you see for uh, Bombardier or GM every few years. Uh, these are kind of more of an open door application program that anyone can apply for. Um, do you think that uh, there's going to be any kind of political fallout from the liberals being seen to give money to the Bank of China, SNC Lavin, Avalon Wheat Charity? Or do you think this is just going to be another thing that they can brush off? I, I wish there'd be bigger fallout, but I think it'll be something they'll just brush off again. I mean, they've brushed off so much already and, and gotten away with it with impunity. And as can be said, I mean, uh, SNC Lavalin, I mean, it, it's clearly a bit of a corrupted, uh, parasitic type of company, much like Bombardier and some of the others. And, and they have a sense of entitlement and they're going to take tax dollars however and whenever they can. And, and they use liberal connections to do it. But at the same time, they are employing people and they probably are 
suffering from the, the COVID fallout and government lockdowns like anyone else, uh, like any other company. And, and if you're going to give to one company, you can't start slicing and dicing. I think the bigger fallout, though, is going to come when we when we start auditing where all the money is. This is just a, the tip of the iceberg. I mean, the Liberals have just been throwing money out there on essentially an honor system. And we know it's been taken advantage of, whether down to the individual levels on CERB or many, many of these companies. And something that's going to be really interesting is all those uh, uh, no interest loans with the forgivable 10,000 that were uh, th thrown out there as well. Uh, our numbers are going to be horrific when we start digging into it for real. All right. Uh, well, before we wrap up, I'll uh, just open the floor up if anyone else has anything uh, to add on any of the topics we've covered today. Well, I'd like to agree with Corey on that. I, I, it's difficult to uh, envision this having any more impact than any of the other scandals that uh, the Trudeau Liberals have gotten away with to date. Um, so I think this picture is going to get much larger. And in the end, I think it's not going to have that much impact. All right. Well, uh, I want to thank everyone for tuning in today, uh, especially we want to, well, actually, before we go, uh, we have a little bit of breaking to do. We have uh, had our first one million reader month. Western Standard in December has uh, beaten our all-time record, of, uh, and we have now hit a million readers just this December. Uh, an absolutely incredible number I'm very proud of. Uh, want to thank uh, the staff, our writers at Western Standard, in particular, uh, news editor Dave Naylor, who's driven so much of this. Uh, we've actually now hit 1.1 million since we put that graphic together. Um, we had our goal of hitting a, uh, having our first million reader month this fiscal year. That is October to October. We hit it right in December. Uh, so we're going to have to move the goalposts again. We're going to need our first 2 million reader month at some point uh, uh, this fiscal year for, uh, for us. Uh, so absolutely fantastic. So I want to thank our members uh, who have been, uh, who are really the bedrock of the Western Standard. We want to thank you from the bottom of our heart for your support. If you enjoy the Western Standard, if you think it's important to have independent Western media that refuse to take government bailouts, please consider becoming a member. Go to westernstandardonline.com, click on the membership section, sign up. For just a couple bucks a month, you can help to support having a genuinely free press uh, that doesn't take uh, the Trudeau bailout, uh, uh, media bailout money. And that makes a big difference in our in our uh, in our press coverage. That we don't we're some of the very few media in the entire country that refuse to take uh, government money. So uh, thank you very much for joining us today. It's been a real pleasure, and thank you everybody who's commented. Uh, and just a reminder: if you're commenting and you like your your comments on the screen, please don't type it in all caps. All caps we're not going to put up. Please don't swear in it. If you swear in it, we're not going to put it up. Shit. I suppose we say shit enough here. We even we even dropped an F-bomb today, but we were quoting the Calgary Police Service. Um, and uh, and don't make your comments too long. If they're going to fill up half the page and uh, cover up my glorious beard, uh, I'm sorry, we're not going to cover my beard. Your comments have to take up just a small part on the bottom of the page. Uh, but we appreciate all the interaction from everybody today. Uh, if you think this is important, make sure you like it, you share it, get it out there for people to see. But thank you very much for uh, all your support and for joining us today. God bless and Merry Christmas. Merry Thank Christmas, you. everyone. Merry Christmas. <laughs>